The crowd turned on one of two men who'd been reported crossing into Milltown Cemetery from a Ford Transit van on the motorway. The man was later taken into custody by the police. The injured, of whom four are serious, were taken to the Royal Victoria Hospital. Rioting broke out in areas of the north afterwards, and political leaders tonight are asking for calm. Well, in our studio in Belfast this evening, we've got uh, Pat Fanukin, a solicitor who was asked to be one of the legal observers at the funeral, asked by the local Association for Legal Justice in Northern Ireland. Pat Fanukin, you were there. What, what happened? Well, I, I was standing about 20 or 30 yards back from the uh, Republican plot with the M1 motorway to my left, and there was an explosion, again, about 30 yards diagonally away to my left, uh, and I thought at first uh, a bomb had been planted and had gone off. There was another explosion. I then thought that a number of uh, bombs had been planted and had exploded. And then a man seemed to stand up and he uh, held in a, his outstretched hand a gun, which he was firing uh, at the crowd. He fired about five shots, then moved back and fired about two more shots. And... Um, <clears throat> Scores, I don't know where they got their courage from, but the uh, scores of young people chased after him. And I think another um, uh, person as well um, was there and was chased in a different direction down uh, the graveyard towards the M1. The first man who was uh, no, uh, noticed and who was closer to the Republican plot um, ran along a, a wire fence uh, on his own, stopping from time to time to to shoot at the pursuers and also to lob uh, more grenades. So there were two men. And they, what happened to the second one? I don't know. Uh, I didn't see the uh, white uh, transit van that has been talked about, which uh, sped off on the uh, M1 motorway and which apparently had been there for quite some time. Uh, presumably this other person uh, reached the van and got away. Well, was there any expectation among the people who were at the funeral <clears throat> that anything like this was going to happen. I mean, the police weren't there. No, I don't, I don't think that was expected at all. Uh, I, I believe uh, some uh, security precautions were taken. And uh, in fact, there was a, um, a roped off area uh, back from the Republican plot. There may have been more people in the immediate vicinity of where the first two or three grenades were thrown if that hadn't uh, been done. Were you frightened? Uh, I think I was, uh, the um, sensation that went through me was uh, bewilderment as to what was happening, trying to figure out what, what exactly was happening. Uh, because it was all over quite quickly, wasn't it? Well, actually, the whole incident was quite protracted. Um, I mean, from the uh, first explosion to the pursuit of this man, it was like watching a, a drama uh, as he was pursued by uh, all these uh, youngsters. Um, and uh, he uh, was quite a, a calm individual and um, all his actions uh, disclosed, uh, displayed a, a kind of composure, uh, uh, even training, even in the way that he fired, held out his hand and fired at the at people and in the way that he was, he, he lobbed grenades. And it was, it was a drama that went on for, uh, it seemed, quite a while and uh, I think it was um, maybe 15 minutes before any uh, Land Rovers arrived at all? There was a British Army helicopter in the in the air right above it. So, 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 what what did the crowd manage to do to him before the police came and took him into custody? I don't know exactly. I believe he was attacked and, and beaten up, uh, mm. and then he was taken and handed over to the police. But you certainly felt it was somebody who was well trained, somebody who had paramilitary training. Well, well it's, he certainly uh, had those characteristics about it. Even the the man's running was was not um, uh, helter skelter or reckless. It was mes he was running in a quite measured way, not yeah. all that hurried. Didn't Brian, want to fall, you know. Well, with you in that Belfast studio is Dr. Brian Feeney of the SDLP. Brian Feeney, what, what's your view? Who, who did this? Who was responsible? Well, of course, I don't know who was responsible. Um, my feeling is that it's um, the UDA or a section of the UDA. Um, that's one of the most serious problems at the moment because the UDA is a seriously weakened organization and that there are factions in it and because it's become factional it's more dangerous um, and it looks to me that it's to be taken in the context of the press conference on monday when the uda announced that they were stepping up their military activity 
And you think this is a direct result of that? Well, we've already had a murder yesterday in South Belfast, which again to me is clearly a response or as a result of the warnings that were given on Monday by the UDA. Well, well, tomorrow and over the next few days, there are going to be more funerals, funerals of the people who were involved in today's incidents. Um, as somebody who lives there and is very conscious of, 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 of keeping tension under control in Belfast, are you very worried? Well, of course I'm concerned that there can be trouble both tonight and in the ensuing days. And I'd certainly reiterate the remarks that have been made today that there shouldn't be any reprisals for what happened and that particularly young people shouldn't try to, to do something and to be forced into the kind of activity that the, this attack was designed to force them into, that there should be no emotional and unthinking backlash um, because this attack was designed uh, as a dreadful provocation to the nationalist community to produce the sort of mindless violence that um, usually disfigures the televisions. But we've already seen rioting in Belfast tonight. I mean, is there any way that can be kept under control? Is there anything you can do? Well, I think all that anyone can do is to ask people not to indulge in this sort of res response. But it is very young people who are engaged in it. As far as I'm aware, at the moment, there isn't any serious rioting. There have been sporadic incidents in parts of North and West Belfast. But I don't think there have been any serious rioting. Well, Sinn Féin today did remark on the absence of the RUC at today's funerals and suggested that there was some sort of, of, of collaboration, some sort of connivance between the police and the people who, who, who did those dreadful things today. Uh, whether you accept that or whether you don't, would you like to see a police presence at the ensuing funerals? No, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I last week particularly asked for the police to behave in a flexible and sensitive manner at these funerals. And I think that their response today was entirely proper because Sinn Féin signalled quite early on in the week that uh, they weren't going to indulge in a paramilitary display, and indeed they didn't. And until the attack was made as the coffins were being lowered into the grave, until that happened, the funerals had passed off entirely peacefully and demonstrated, in fact, what I was saying last week, that if both sides behaved in a responsible manner, there wouldn't be any violence. And I would like to see all funerals in the north of Ireland carried out in that way. Right. Well, today, despite speculation to the contrary, the UDA denied that they were directly involved. Could one be seeing the, the, the UVF, perhaps, carrying out what traditionally has been regarded as, as, as the UDA's job? I don't know. Um, as I say, I'm still taking it in the context of what has been said earlier on this week. But as I said earlier, the problem is now we have factions in the UDA. There's no longer one central control. And we can have one faction of the UDA trying to um, outmatch another faction.